Hey everyone, it's Pat from Pat Dev Music, and today we're checking out another one finger riff video. This is using all of your suggestions, none of mine. So if there's any riffs or songs that you want to learn, leave a comment below, send me a message over on Facebook or on Instagram. I always get back to you guys every week, but otherwise we're going to dive right on in. Now before we start, I always mention at the end of the video, but just in case you don't make it that far, in the description below, there's a hundred more riffs in one video. So a hundred riffs. There's also two playlists. So if you're just starting out and you're thinking, where do I go? There's so many, you know, videos around on the internet. I just want one place. Just go to my grade one uh, modern musician playlist and all the videos are in order. You just go through one by one. So you're part of a course that way. It's all free. You just watch the videos. Otherwise, let's start. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for the suggestion. The suggestion came over from Facebook. It is Black Sabbath's Into the Void. Now on the recording, the guitars are tuned all the way down, I think, to C, but I've worked it out how to play it in E standard tuning. So just tune your guitar up as you would regularly. Check on the sort of bridge pickup, a lot of distortion. And I'll show you how to play it. So coming on in with your first finger all the way up to the ninth fret on the uh, sixth string, the E string, then move up to the 12th fret. Then you're going to drop down and on the 5th string, or the string below, you're going to play the 9th, 10th and 11th. That's what we've got so far. Now you're going to drop down and play the 11th on the string below. Then back up and play the 11th. Then back down a string and play the 10th, so one fret back. Then back up and play that 11th again. And then drop down a string and play the 9th. Then this time when you jump back up, you're going to play the 10th and a little bit of vibrato. That's what we've got so far. Now I would suggest using the meaty part of your palm to mute it rather than open. So it sounds more like this. Next part is a little bit tricky. If you're only using one finger, you're going to slide from the ninth to the tenth and then back to the ninth on the fifth string. Just like that. Once you can do that, you're going to jump up a string to the twelfth fret on the sixth string. You can do that three times. Now, a much easier way of playing the whole thing would be to use different fingers and play that position. That means every time you see a ninth fret, use your first finger. Every time you see a tenth, use your second. Every time you see eleventh, use your third finger. And every time you see a twelfth, use your pinky. So this would look like that. And you would do a hammer-on pull-off instead of that slide and then 12th finger with your pinky. And then the last part is one finger, then I'll show you with multiple. 9th, 10th, 11th on the 5th string. Drop down a string, 11th. Slide back from the 11th to the 9th, 5th string. And then 12th fret on the 6th string. That last part. And then you immediately start the riff again. If I was playing each sort of finger in a position, then pull off 11th to 9th. And then you start again. And that's it. Thank you very much for the suggestion. So, Alright, so checking out the Rolling Stones, thank you for the suggestion. So with this song, it seems like the, in the original recording in the 60s or the 70s, uh, the guitars are sort of quite detuned, like some of the original Beatles recordings. But you can definitely find a version to play along with, diving right on in, so jumping jack flash. So you're going to want to have a power chord up on the first fret of the A string. Now if you can't do that, that's fine. Just use your first finger on the first fret of the A string. And then work up to doing a power chord. Okay, once you've done that, you're going to drop down a string and you're going to play the 1st fret, then the 3rd fret, then the 1st fret of the string below, and you can do that again. And one more time. So you play the chord twice, then you play the melody or the riff three times. 
Now much easier if you use your first finger and your third finger. <laughs> fun riff just before the chorus, well done. Okay, checking out another heavy song. Thank you for the suggestion, this is Push the Venom. Now originally the guitars are tuned down to C, but I'm gonna show you a way that you can play it in standard. You can still play along with the riff. Let's check it out, very, very heavy song. So we're gonna show you one finger and then I'll show you its power chords. You're gonna play the first, the 10th fret on the E string, then back one fret, back two frets, then all the way back up to the 10th fret. That's half the riff. Then you go back to the 7th fret on the same string and you play that 12 times. And you're chugging away, so you're going to palm mute with the thickest part of your palm. Now, depending on sort of how sort of fast you're chugging along or which recording, I would say 11 to 12 times. It's more of a feel thing, so maybe start off counting those 11 times. And it's a bit of a pause before you start the riff again. So here's both parts put together. Now, if you were playing with multiple fingers, you could play it with your pinky on the 10th, then your third finger on the 9th, first finger on the seventh. And then you just start again. Now it sounds a lot chunkier if you're using power chords like this. That's it, that's the riff of Push the Venom. Thanks for the suggestion. Airborne, brilliant Australian band. Sounds so much like ACDC. Definitely check out Airborne if you haven't heard of them before. Thank you for the suggestion. Let's check it out. So you're gonna want to have the, uh, you know, back sort of pickup, bit of distortion. Classic rock sort of distortion. Now bring your first finger all the way up to the seventh fret on the uh, D string and you want the A string ringing out as well. So you're gonna play both of them at the same time. Move your first finger back two frets, but stay on the same string and again, play the open A string as well. Move back one fret, again, twice. Move back two frets and then just play that chord once. What we've got so far. Now once you've done that, and I will show you the full chords very, very soon, jump up to the third fret and the sixth string, play that twice. Then go to the fifth fret on the A string, play that twice. That's what we've got for that. And the last part of the entire riff, you're so close, first finger on the second fret of the E string, and you'll play second, third. In the last chord, you want to have the open uh, fifth string and your first finger on the second fret of the D string, like an A chord. And that's it. Now, if you want to set, make that sounding, you know, a little bit fuller, a little bit chunkier, turn it into power chords like this. Now, when you come up to this power chord, you have your first finger on the fourth and your pinky all the way on the seventh. Then big open A chord. Big open G chord twice. Open D. Then A. And that's it. Good luck practicing. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, checking out Blink-182's First Date. Haven't heard this song in ages. Check out the video clip if you haven't. Hilarious. Diving right on in. So, the, we're going to do the chorus. So, first finger, third fret on the A string. Play that three times. Quite quickly. Drop back a fret. Play that three times. Then jump up a string to the fifth fret on the sixth string. Play that four times. And then first fret, same string, twice. 
third fret, same string twice. So what we've got. Brilliant. Now if you want to make it a little bit harder, try power chords like this. Then first finger back to the second fret and use your pinky to get that fifth fret. Power chord. Once you've done that twice, you go straight into the sort of more sort of strumming part of the chorus where he's singing uh, forever and ever. Let's make this last forever. So each of the chords that you're playing before, instead of three times, you play four times. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same again, twice on the last two chords. And that's it, great job. All right, so a bit of Pearl Jam here. Thank you for suggestions. So diving right on in. First finger on the fifth fret of the E string, sort of bridge pickup, a little bit of distortion there. First finger, fifth fret, sixth string. Just play that three times. Then drop down a string and play the third fret four times. Try palm muting the whole thing and just practice that one sort of chord change. So you want it three times and then four times. Great. So let's start from the beginning. You've got that change. So let's start again. Then do that again. So one, two, three. Then start again. For the next part, drop down a string and play that four times. And then go back to the third fret, same string, play that twice. And then jump up a string and play that four times. So holding nice and slow and I'll be really deliberate uh, in the way that I'm picking, but remember it's all sort of palm muted. And as power chords. Now that's it. Now whether you want to have just on the second last part twice and four or five times, completely up to you. But just try and get that rhythm with the palm muting. That's it. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, an old sort of massive hit by The Offspring. Thank you for the suggestion. Lots of power chords, lots of distortion. Let's check it out. All right, so you're gonna be on the sixth string and I know it's a bit silly, you know, with the singing at the start of the song for self-esteem, but I would just listen to it and try and get that rhythm. So you're gonna start off with your first finger on the fifth fret of the sixth string, play that twice. Then you can play it four more times quite quickly. So down, up, down, up, picking. So the whole thing. Once you've done that, you then drop down a string, go to the eighth fret, you play that twice. Then you almost sort of think of that as part one, and then for part two, you start the same rhythm again. So for part two, first finger, third fret on the A string, Again, play that twice, then four times quickly. Jump up a string and play it twice, and you're done. So part one, part two, and you repeat the whole thing. So then do it again. Once you've repeated it all twice, you're up to the second part of the riff. First finger on the first fret of the sixth string and you just palm mute with the thickest part of your hand. So you palm mute that 12 times. Once you've done that, you play the third fret on the E string twice. Drop down and play that third fret twice. 
Jump back up and play that third fret twice. And then move up and play the fifth fret once. So that last part. So the whole, that last section. And then you would start off again. The whole thing is around. And that's it. Heaps of fun to play. Massive, massive fan, you know, back in the 90s. Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> Okay, thank you for suggestions, CKY. The track is called 96 Quite Bitter Beings. Haven't heard it in a long time. It's quite tricky to play because the original tuning is maybe down to C or something like that. It's very, very heavy tuning, but I've worked the song out so you can play it in your regular tuning so you don't have to change your tuning. So I'm gonna show you one finger method, but it's way easier if you use your pinky, but I'll show you both. So diving right on in, you're gonna have your first finger on the sixth fret of the A string. Then move up to the ninth fret, same string. Drop down a string and play the 8th fret. Then jump back up a string and play the 6th fret. So just focus on that one part. Let's call that sort of part 1 of 4. Now it's way easier if you treat this as a position. So every 6th fret, you use your 1st. Every 7th fret, you use your 2nd. Every 8th fret, you use your 3rd finger. And every pinky on the 9th fret. Once you can do that, once you can do that, move on to the second part, which again, sixth fret on the fifth string, ninth fret, same string, drop down a string and play the eighth, ninth, eighth. Then jump up a string, play the ninth and then the eighth, then up a string and play the ninth. It's a lot to take in that second part, so nice and slowly. And the last part is the trickiest. So you would come in with your first string on the seventh fret of the sixth string, then the ninth fret, string down, then eleventh fret, string down. So just try and practice that. Or if you're using all your fingers, first finger, second finger, pinky. Once you've done that, ninth fret on the D string, and then eighth and then sixth. So just focus on that. Last sort of part, play the ninth on the fifth string, then drop down a string, play the eighth, then back to the ninth. And that's it. So here's the whole thing. I'll put a pause between each part. And remember trying to use as many fingers as you can. Think of it as positions. That's it, thanks for the suggestion. All right, checking out a song by Bullet For My Valentine. Tricky song, detune guitars, but I'll show you in regular standard tuning. It's tapping, I'm gonna show you one finger method, which is quite tricky, but you can definitely do it. And I'll show you uh, an easier way to play it after that with a couple of different fingers. Thank you for the suggestion. So what you wanna do, you start out with quite a bit of distortion. Okay, now you wanna just practice just this finger first, your first finger, and you want to hammer on to the fifth fret, so you're not picking. So you're 
just going to get a nice strong sound, a nice strong tone on the fifth fret. Once you can do that, you want to use this first finger on this hand to tap on the twelfth fret. Same string. So this is what it would sound like. Just one fluid motion. Great job. Once you can do that, practice that a little bit. Then you want to tap on the 13th fret. So everything else is the same, but you tap on the 13th. Once you can do that, you go back and you tap on the 12th. Then you tap on the 13th. So you've tapped on the 12th, 13th, 12th, 13th. The last part, quite tricky, you tap on the 13th and then you slide this finger to the 15th. And that's it. So I'll show you just that last part, then I'll loop the whole thing. And that's it, that's the entire riff. So nice and slow. And you're done. Now there's so many different ways to do this riff. I would suggest when you can do this part, ho still hold your pick, but slide it up so that it's sort of resting on your first finger so you can still use your first finger, or hold the pick and try and tap with your second finger. Still sounds exactly the same. Doesn't matter which finger you use. Now I would suggest moving into more fingers, you try and hammer on again with your first finger, but then rather than sliding, you're hammering on with your pinky. Once you can do that, the next part is as soon as you've tapped, pull off, so you sort of tap, hammer on, and then pull off, so the string vibrates back to this finger. And then you just add in that riff that we were learning before. And that's it. Thank you for the suggestion. Heaps of fun to play. Yes, a little bit tricky, but it's cool learning how to tap. Good luck. the final riff of the lesson. So thank you very much for checking it out. Thanks for the suggestion, it is Weezer El Scorcho. Heaps of fun to play, I'll show you with a clean tone. But then they do get distorted, but you can just pop on some distortion later on. So coming around on here, we've got a bit of a clean tone. So coming on here with your first finger on the fourth fret of the sixth string, you're gonna play that once. Then drop down string and go to the sixth fret and play that once. Bit of a bouncy rhythm. Once you've done that, you actually jump down two strings to the third string and you play the fifth fret. So once you've done that, you actually jump down to the uh, two strings, so third string, fifth fret. Then jump up one string and play the sixth fret. Just try that. The next part of the song is a little bit harder, so make sure you've got that. Now how I would play this entire song, you know me, is as positions. So every time you see a fourth fret, use your first finger, uh, fifth fret, second, uh, sixth fret, third, and then any sevenths, use your pinky. Much easier to play in the long run. The second part of the riff, so you're already halfway there, well done. Use your first finger on the fourth fret of the fifth string. Drop down a string again to the 6th fret. Drop down two strings, but this time you need to play the 6th fret. And then jump up a string to the 6th fret. And that's the second part. You put them both together. That's it. What I would do with the second part, 
using multiple fingers is use your first finger, third finger, pinky, and then third finger. Will take a little bit of while, but then you don't have to sort of fly around your first finger, you don't have to look at what you're playing. Ultimately, it'll be easier in the long run. And that's it. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Okay, and that's it. Thank you so much for all your suggestions. If you want to learn more about sort of theory, head over to this playlist. If you want to learn more of a modern musician approach, writing your own songs and riffs, head over here. But otherwise, I'll see you again for another video in the next couple of days. Bye.